Hello and welcome to Craftworks by G, where we do everything and anything and hope to inspire. So today we'll be turning a hex nut into a ring. So this is my first time. I make some mistakes. I go through it all and tell it through the video so you don't have to make the mistakes. Let's go! Alrighty, if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, and share the love and inspiration. First things first, we gotta cut this nut in half. I'm coloring with a sharpie, then we're going to scribe the middle. The sharpie really helps with being able to see the scribe line. I couldn't find my veneer calipers, so I used an old leather wing divider. You can really see the scribe line pop because of the sharpie. Using a metal saw and some cutting lube, we proceed to cut the nut in half. I'm wearing a face mask because I don't want to be breathing in metal. You know, like, pretty sure y'all don't want metal in your lungs, nah I mean? So this ring process is a lot of filing, grinding, and sanding. I'm filing this newly cut nut so it doesn't have any jagged edges so I don't cut myself. got smart and used a locking plier to hold the nut. This helped out so much. Using a ring mandrel that I got from Amazon, we checked the inner diameter size. I am making this as a gift for a friend, so that person will forever have my very first handmade ring, you know? Keep in mind, you always want to constantly check that inner diameter size when you're filing it down because once you overshoot, it becomes too loose and you have to restart. Once you've achieved the proper inner diameter, it's time to file down the outer diameter. Firstly, we gotta file down the corners of the nut. Once that's done, we determine the outer diameter using the sharpie and scribing it. Oh hey look! I found my veneer caliper now. This ring is going to have an inlay, so I don't want the outer diameter to be too thin, so I'm going to make enough space for an inlay groove. Now keep on filing. And here's the result. It gets harder to see that scribe line once you actually get near it. And again, sharply scribing the inlay groove, taking the width of the ring and dividing it by three. Now this part is crucial. You want to be very careful when doing this. It was difficult for me to get super precise cuts with the metal saw. And you don't want to rush this and accidentally veer off the cut. All right, guys, right, so new, it's a new day. And uh, I messed up. I messed up trying to get the inlay and like the inlay groove and I messed up and did it on the outside the, the saw slip so I'm gonna have to restart because I cannot salvage this and yeah I wanted to do this with all hand tools but not anymore time to use some power tools let's go okay so what happened was the saw veered off and created this slope going into the inlay recess which totally threw off the three sections of the ring face. 
and I could not salvage it. Now we're using power tools to catch up to the step I messed up on. Note, you can absolutely do this project with only hand tools. So if you only have hand tools, you can still do this project no problem. Just don't mess up like I did. <laughs> Okay, so now we're back on the same step. Now we file down the inline groove to make it smooth. This is what we have so far. You can really see that inlay groove right there. I got some selenite here because the person likes selenite who I'm gifting this to and you can use whatever gemstone rock you like. After cutting it, I'm going to crush it. Haha, <laughs> crushing it bro. Use a paper towel so the soon to be dust particles don't fly around everywhere and make sure you're wearing a face mask or some respirator. Time to set the inlay. This little bottle thing is CA glue, the thin viscosity type, so it can penetrate through all the particles. And sorry for the camera focus. Sprinkling the crushed selenite. If you want to be super cool, you can do this like Salt Bay. After it's all dried up, you'll have excess particles, so we're gonna file that down. You want some behind the scenes? Well, here's some behind the scenes, you know, gotta, gotta make this fun while you're doing the project, you know, you can't be all super, super focused and come on, come on, be loose, gotta have fun. Once all the excess is filed off, it's time to do the fine sanding. I start from 60 grit to 120 to 300. And then after that, it should look pretty shiny, like here. Soon. It's coming. It's coming. Just wait. All right. Now we do the top coat layer of CA glue. I don't think I should have done this step because it really dulled down the white color of the selenite, but other colored gems probably might not be affected. Time to do more fine sanding after the top coat and from here, I start at 600 and you can go up to however fine grit you'd like. And you know what's after the fine sanding? Mm-hmm, that's right, B-roll! So there it is guys, a hex nut into a ring inlay. So hope y'all enjoyed, thank you for watching, and remember, it's never too late to learn and create. Peace!